Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial. It's my second Adobe Lightroom tutorial. Um, we're gonna kinda take it a little easy. We're not gonna just ramp right into the most advanced of most advanced things in Lightroom. Although I should say, the nice thing about Lightroom is there's, there's not a whole lot about it, at least in my mind, that's that advanced. There's some stuff that maybe conceptually is difficult to grasp, um, but it's a relatively simple, easy program to learn. You should be able to learn it, I should be able to learn it, our neighbors should be able to learn it. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is I did a commercial portrait or not really commercial portrait, commercial fashion shoot for a buddy of mine. Um, and we just needed to get it done, get it done quickly. Um, in fact, I think he called me like the day before and we, it was just something he needed to get done. So I ran over, we shot the whole thing in his basement. So we didn't even shoot in studio. We didn't rent the studio. didn't use, uh, it, it was, it's the epitome. I'll put it this way. It's the epitome of the low budget fashion shoot because we just did it fast and as cheaply as possible and that included shooting in his basement so there's going to be a couple things we need to tackle in these images because of that but overall we got some great stuff and i'm going to show you how i process a set of images like that right now so here we go uh this is my buddy michael he did the modeling as well he's a business owner he's a great guy if you're into uh, men's clothing he runs a company called henley bond i'll try to link it in the description of the video you can uh, go check out the website they do all kinds of custom shirts you, you can customize them right there online you can you know get a shirt uh, that they, they, they'll, they'll kind of help stylize you a little bit based on things like you know the drink you like and all kinds of different things like that uh, it's kind of cool kind of interesting Let's get started with this. Here's uh, what we do. So we did get a nice blown out white background. Now, because of the confined space, we were having some light blowback into the camera, which is why it almost looks a little dusty and not quite uh, as contrasty as it should. So let's open up the basic panel here and first thing, crank the contrast up. Uh, maybe I will, I'm going to look at the brightness here. I'm going to hover over and just make sure my background is super close to white. You can see it's not quite solid white, so we might need to pop the whites a little bit. Now we're 99.9. .9. Let's go to the highlights and pop them a little bit as well. Now we're basically at 100 everywhere we look, um, and we'll, we'll top that off with the uh, with the adjustment brush in a moment. Uh, but I want to make the blacks a little bit blacker, make the shadows a little bit more shadowy. So again, it's just going to combat uh, sort of the haziness. Actually, one of the things that we could potentially use is the good old uh, dehaze slider here in the effects panel. We could try that. You do want to be careful, though, because as you can see, it really tends to start making his skin look like he spent a little bit too much time in the self tanning booth um, so we can we can be careful with that but maybe like I don't know five six seven eight definitely it, it doesn't do bad things to the image helps clear out some of that haze I, I won't complain uh, so we've got nice uh, nice stuff we've got going on with him getting rid of that haze in the foreground let's go HSL his skin is still a little bit too orange so let's go hue and here in the oranges let's shift that a little bit more toward I think maybe we should go a little bit more toward the red and just be very careful. Maybe just take it down two, three, four in the saturation department as well. Great. Uh, I don't think we need to use the tone curve in this instance. Let's go to detail here. Select our little finder uh, doodad up here. Select his face. Let's crank up and include some sharpening here. Let's hold down Alter Option and drag the mask, uh, the masking slider, and that's going to just make sure that we're uh, sharpening just his suit, and we're not just needlessly sharpening noise out in the open. That's what all that the black areas or areas where sharpening will not be applied. The white edges are areas where sharpening will be applied. So you can see great sharpening all over the suit. Wonderful. Uh, we don't really need to do much noise reduction or color noise reduc reduction. That's all good. So go detail. Uh, now in lens correction, let's just choose to enable the profile corrections. I was using the 2470 F2.8 lens for this. Um, so that corrects that nicely. And that's probably pretty much it. So before I do any retouching to my individual images, I like to get my general settings for the shoot down pat. And I think that is what I want. So what I'm going to do now is select all the rest of my photos here and hit this little sync button right over here. So when I do that, it's gonna say, hey look, what settings would you like to synchronize? Well, I mean, I'd like to synchronize everything, white balance, all the tones, all the color stuff, all the lens correction stuff. Um, I didn't do any local adjustments with the brush or uh, you know, graduated filters or spot removal or cropping, any of that stuff. So I'm just gonna choose synchronize and it's gonna take this effect and plaster it over all of the rest of uh, my images. Now I can quickly look and like this is, I know is gonna be more challenging because he's wearing a very light shirt and it's a very light background. So I might need to take special care uh, when I'm, you know, adjusting things like the the brightness factor and the highlights and stuff like that because of the shirt. 
Uh, but we're not even going to really touch that image right now. That's just more of a technical note. Stuff to consider, especially when you're shooting, you know, the white shirt over the solid white background dilemma and how you photograph that. Um, it's a lot of stuff that really should be taken care of in camera. Now, hey guys, real quick, I want to take a quick break from uh, kind of the workflow and retouching of this image. Let you guys know I'm selling a Photoshop course, actually, not Lightroom, but Photoshop course over on my website, tutfit.com. A link should have just appeared up there in the corner of the video. It's all about retouching images. So maybe you're interested. I don't know. Here's the thing. If you pick up the course, it helps support what we do here. Really helps me keep creating content, generating more of this stuff. And generating more of this stuff is exactly what I want to do. So if you pick up a course, it helps support the site and everything we do here. And I'm greatly appreciative uh, toward you if you choose to do that as well. Uh, so without further ado, well, without further ado, check out the link. Uh, but without further ado, for real, let's get back to this Lightroom video. All right, let's go back to our initial image. What we want to do at this point is uh, go ahead and begin the retouching. So we've done, we've applied the settings across all of our images that are going to be constant. All of our images have that sharpening and everything else. Now we're going to do the image by image stuff. So I'm going to zoom in on his shoes here and I'm zooming in at one to one, but I could also go three to one. And like, for instance, I had this mark here on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, blemish removal tool here. And I'm just going to just paint over that. It's going to get rid of that little blemish. Great. And then I can just keep, you know, moving along and I can just keep a lookout for stuff like the little spot in the tip of the shoe um, you know a couple little dots you know he, he deals in higher end menswear so I want to make sure stuff like that is cleaned up particularly uh, in his photos stuff that maybe I would let slip on other shots uh, or for other clients who don't necessarily care about that kind of stuff uh, so we're just gonna make sure we clean that stuff up you know there's a little dot there uh, on that that little mark and there there is a stray thread that's probably better suited to be taken care of in Photoshop because of its weaving nature and the pattern uh, on on these pants the pinstripes all right there we go that's great uh, we got this little whatever that is there uh, we're gonna get rid of that there we go that actually blends together pretty nice I'm not gonna worry too much about some of those hairs again that would be stuff that would end up being taken care of in Photoshop I'm gonna keep moving over this. Uh, he's got a mark here on his face, so we'll get rid of that. And again, it's just, you know, at this point, it's basic retouching stuff. It's up to you how much you you keep or you get rid of. Um, and I would go through and I would get rid of whatever needs to be uh, gotten rid of, and I would keep whatever the client wants to keep uh, using the, the blemish removal tool. And by the way, I'm working with it in the healing mode. Uh, it just tends to be a way that I prefer to work with it. I'm going to go back to the fit uh, viewpoint here, and you can see all the different stuff that I've already done. In, in closing, in terms of the retouching, you're going to go over and you're going to retouch everything you can, clean everything up, make everything as nice as you can, uh, get rid of all the blemishes, marks, you know, stray dots and little dusties and stuff like that on his clothing, uh, especially when it's dark clothing like this. Next up, and actually I'm going to zoom back into 3 to 1. I know I just left, but we, we want to work on his face. So I'm just going to collapse this panel over here to get it out of the way. Um, and one of the things that I typically would do, now this has more to do with portraits than something like commercial fashion, but you can use the adjustment brush and you can, you know, brighten things up. Let's make sure saturation is back to 100%. I'm just going to double click on effect here, bring saturation back to 100%. Let's boost our brightness a little bit and I can make my brush tiny and I can move right in and just add brightness to the bottom of his eyes. Something like that, right? Maybe that, that, that brightness is a little bit too subtle over there. Uh, and, you know, you can brighten up the catch light and the top of the eye, stuff like that. Uh, we can create a new brush, and we can make this a little bit darker, and we can do things like just darken up his eyebrows. It's going to give him the appearance that they're a little thicker. Darken beneath the nostrils of his nose here, the split on the lip. Uh, the jawline or beneath the jawline, I should say. Uh, so we can go ahead and do all kinds of different adjustments like that. We can even use the adjustment brush, just brighten things up a little bit. We can use the adjustment brush to do, you know, some dodging and burning. So we can just follow the highlights of the, uh, the image here. And we can apply a little bit of dodging to the highlighty areas. And we can create a new brush, make it a little bit darker. And we can go ahead and burn in some of these areas that we feel need to be burned in and darkened up to really just complete the look and uh, complete what it is that we're working on. So I'm going to bring out my side panel here. I'm going to go back to fit. And we can see we've just done a little bit of dodging and burning as well as skin retouching, touched up the eyes a little bit. Um, so there's a lot you can do with the adjustment brush. It, really, the sky is the limit. Oh, you know, one other thing that I like to do, especially with something like this, is go down to objects like the watch. So I'm going to set my exposure, leave that at normal. I like to boost the contrast a little bit and also boost the clarity a bit. Dehaze, eh, maybe not so much. I have auto mask turned off, especially for an object like the watch like this. Uh, but I can just paint over that. And you can just see, I mean, it just really makes it pop. You can also go over somebody's shoes with an effect like this. And it's really just going to make them uh, much crisper, 
uh, cleaner looking pair of shoes. Now, when you're doing commercial fashion like this, you do need to be cognizant of the colors uh, that are involved. So we might go ahead and just kind of brighten something like this up again, make it a little bit warmer. Um, sometimes the client will give you uh, actual samples of fabric and stuff like that. So you can just kind of keep, keep an eye on it, make sure that it's looking as realistic as it should be. In this case, the shoes are just an accessory and the suit is the star of the show. So I'm not too overly concerned, but again, something to keep in mind as you're working on this stuff. So there we have it. We've done the adjustments uh, for him. We've retouched him. We've cleaned him up, all that good stuff. The last, well, not the last, but the second to last thing that I want to do again with the adjustment brush is get rid of this junk outside around here and extend the white background. So this is just crank exposure all the way up. Contrast will be down. I'm going to crank highlights. I'm going to crank shadows. I'm going to crank whites and blacks. Everything. Everything goes up. And now what I'm going to do, make my brush larger. I am going to feather it. I'm going to make it quite feathered, maybe right around 30. Oh, I'm sorry, not 30. I want it around 80, 85. Um, and we're just going to paint over this stuff. And you can see that it's just going to paint it right away. Now, we do have an issue here because the line runs into his head. I'll show you how to tackle that in a second. Uh, but we're just going to go over this stuff. And now I'm going to go three to one. We're going to zoom in on his head. Well, we got to just hold down our hand tool and scroll up, 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 up. And we have, first of all, this little fire uh, the sprinkler system here in the ceiling. So we can just paint over that to get rid of it. And now that we've zoomed in, our brush tool uh, is kind of relative. So it's still, you know, as big as it was, but the image has gotten much larger. So it's much easier to use and get a perfect uh, a perfect bit of brightening all the way to the side of his head and just cover up that line just like so. So we'll go back to fit and you can see now he is over an entirely solid white background. Uh, pretty cool. Looks pretty good. Uh, and the last but uh, last but not least thing to do is just use your crop tool and rotate. Make sure that everything looks straight. Everything is cropped up the way it should be. Uh, maybe you're cropping every image so there's like a center line right around his waist. You can uh, hit the letter O to change. Uh, to change the the overlay for the crops, maybe in this case I want his the ring finger or you know right above his waist to be going through the top line. Um, there's all kinds of different things, right? In this case, you could you know pick anything. His you know his nose has got to be center aligned and his lips are going through the you know the third line from the top or something. And that way, every one of your images is going to be positioned roughly the same. And you're going to have uh, great, consistent images with the solid white background uh, that you're ready to output and send to the client. And by the way, you can output them here. I'm going to hit Command or Control D to deselect everything. I can select that image. I can just right click, go export, export, and export. You know, a JPEG if the client wants a JPEG. If they want higher quality TIFFs or something like that, you can always export uh, anything here that you would like to export. Uh, but for the most part, JPEG is going to work great. Just choose your quality, choose where you want to save it, and just export, boom, done, and you have done all of the retouching and the entire workflow for a commercial fashion shoot here in Lightroom. So that about wraps it up for this one, retouching a commercial fashion shoot in Lightroom and just kind of the workflow and things that I go through. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure if you did enjoy it to leave a little like on this video. Also, drop a comment down below if you feel so inclined. Subscribe to my channel as well. That way you never miss another one of these videos ever in the future. And for commercial fashion workflow in Lightroom and retouching with the adjustment brush and a little bit of dodging and burning and exposure and contrast and sharpness and whites and blacks and shadows and highlights and everything in between. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.